So that phrase, do what makes you happy, should probably be bagged up and shipped to farmers in order to increase this year's crop yield, because it is some fertile bullshit. Do you really want everyone to do what makes them happy? Jeffrey Dahmer did what made him happy. So did Adolf Hitler. You could argue that Adolf Hitler wasn't exactly happy. Though he might be one of those happy people who take sad pictures, like happy person who takes sad pictures clone, for example. Oh, hey clone, you're looking happy. I rarely see a clone look so happy. I'm gonna take a picture of this. Oh, okay. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. That picture made me sad. Which is fine, you don't have to be happy all the time. Imagine a world where everyone did exactly what made them happy. You wouldn't be able to get tomatoes at the grocery store because of all the men humping the produce section. That's what I assume all men would do if everyone did what made them happy. Not me, other men. <laughs> oh, my neighbors are playing ping pong. Pretty intense game, actually. Hmm. Ooh, net. Actually, there probably wouldn't even be a produce section. Think of all the workers in California picking vegetables in the hot sun all day. They're not gonna keep doing that. They're gonna quit their jobs and go home and play Farmville, or some, probably something not crop related. The entire economy of California would collapse. All the actors at waiting tables, they'd quit their jobs. Everyone in San Francisco would quit their rice aroni manufacturing jobs. That's still the main industry in San Francisco, right? From San Francisco, famous for food, comes rice a -roni, the exciting new side dish. Of course, when people say do what makes you happy, they don't mean exercise your every immediate desire, no matter how horrible. Except for JFK, who said that once in a speech. And so, my fellow Americans, exercise your every immediate desire, no matter how horrible. For your country. But uh, that was the immediate desire 60s. It was a different time. No, I think what people actually mean when they say that is when you're faced with crucial choices in your life, choose the one that makes you happy. That's a more reasonable thing to say. And you should probably also get some poop bags because it's extreme bullshit. I recommend the scented poop bags. It will make the experience a lot nicer. But over time, the scent actually will just become associated with poop and then you're back to poop again, just like happiness. It all eventually leads to poop. You can never escape poop. You see, here are some things that make me happy. Tacos, chocolate, grilled steaks with garlic chive butter and French style potato salad. And guess what? I've turned them all into poop. It's like my superpower. When I eat bananas, I turn them into poop. When I eat chicken, I turn it into poop. Chocolate ice cream, how many scoops? It doesn't matter, I turn it into poop. Poop, 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 poop. But don't feel down about it. Like happiness, poop also fades away and biodegrades and helps regrow the things we like. In some cases, it grows these crazy mushrooms that make you think you're in sub-Saharan Africa when you're actually laying in a dumpster behind a Taco Bell, hypothetically. But that's not every case. Either way, happiness returns, be it dumpster happiness or otherwise. Don't do drugs, kids. It won't make you happy, permanently, but neither will anything else, but super really for drugs. The idea that choosing that one thing that's gonna make you happy assumes that happiness is a tangible, singular, constant state of being that seems to last forever like the end of The Return of the King. But no, happiness happens in moments. You could get your dream job someday, but bad things are still gonna happen. The world around you will change and that might change you. Like, I had no idea that fidget spinners were gonna be such an important part of my life. And twerking. And fidget twerking. Gotta get better at that. Imagine if you're in your 20s and you get your dream job. Let's say, staying on theme, running a sewage system during the best time in history to start up a sewage system, the second industrial revolution at the beginning of the 20th century. It was a very poopy time. You're making that sweet, sweet sewage money and supporting your sweet, sweet sewage family. Happiness achieved forever. But then there's World War I, and the Great Depression, and World War II, and Vietnam, and all your drug trips in the 60s and 70s, and hair metal cod piece overload in the 80s. That's a serious affliction. ABC's TGIF lineup in the 90s, and then at that point you're really old, so you probably died. Died with laughter. Oh, Uncle Joey, <laughs> cut it out. <laughs> but seriously, you're dead. And thank goodness you got out before the world had to go through the ups and downs of Ross and Rachel's relationship. Whew. Ross tried to do what made him happy in the moment, and it didn't go very well. But they were on a break! Now, not only did those crazy historical moments make being a businessman challenging, they may have changed you as a person. You may have stopped caring about sewage if that's possible. So taking a look at your actual life today, you can go ahead and decide your future, 
But just know that things are going to change. You're probably going to change. The universe is going to change. That's just how it works. Everything oscillates between opposing forces. Birth, death, awake, asleep, surplus, poverty, peace, war, Star Wars 4 through 7, and Star Wars 1 through 3. So I think what's better to search for than happiness is balance. I'm not saying fidget spinners are the answer to everything, but I'm kind of saying fidget spinners are the answer to everything. Awesome stuff will happen and crappy stuff will happen. Just learn to enjoy the process. That's the only way you're going to be able to weather any phantom menace that comes your way. And they're coming. And they're bringing Jar Jar with them. And the Gungans. And finally, something something with a tone of finality and conclusion. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Over here is my Patreon page if you'd like to support my oscillating process of opposing forces. I didn't mean for that to sound sexy. Did that sound sexy? I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, that reminds me, I need to go get some tomatoes.